USA Radio News with Chris Barnes. Clearly eager to reopen the U.S. economy, President Trump says he'll soon be speaking with governors of all 50 states. On his plans to do so, the president saying there will be differences from state to state. Actually, there are over 20 that are in extremely good shape, and we think we're going to be able to get them open fairly quickly, and then others will follow. The U.N. is knocking President Trump's decision to halt funding to the World Health Organization. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres saying funding for the WHO should not be cut, especially while the world is fending off coronavirus. This might be a good time to check your bank account. The Treasury Department says $1,200 coronavirus stimulus payments are going to be hitting accounts of more than 80 million people starting today. And you're listening to USA Radio News. This report is brought to you by the College Board. The unprecedented spread of the coronavirus has closed schools across the country, some for the rest of the year. So what about the millions of high school students who have been working hard to earn college credits by taking advanced placement classes? The College Board has unveiled virtual supports for students, including free, live, and on-demand AP review lessons on YouTube and the first-ever online AP exams. Students can take the AP exam at home on a device of their choice in a safe, comfortable environment. Trevor Packer is the Senior Vice President for Advanced Placement and Instruction at the College Board. We've surveyed AP students nationwide and the vast majority want to take the exam. That's why we've set up a process that's simple, secure, and accessible. We want to make sure that every student has the chance to earn the college credit they've been working so hard for. The 45-minute online exams will be given from May 11th through May 22nd. Makeup test dates will also be available. To learn more, visit cb.org. Oprah Winfrey sounding an alarm about the seriousness of coronavirus and its disproportionate effects on the African-American community. In the latest installment of her Oprah Talks COVID-19 series, Winfrey spoke with Hoda Kotb of NBC's Today Show about the impact of the illness on the black community, drawing attention to those suffering from pre-existing conditions. If you are taking medication, I think it's important for African-American, we need to understand for ourselves that this is so serious. It's Mm -hmm. taking us out. The April 15th tax deadline would normally hit today, but it's been extended for three months because of the coronavirus pandemic. But a new Harris poll out today finds only 43% of people surveyed are taking advantage of the extension and waiting until July to file their tax returns. This is USA Radio News. Here's your Georgetown forecast from the HIP Radio Network Weather Center. Partly cloudy skies today with highs around 66. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Clear skies tonight. Lows dip down to about 45. High of 76. Tomorrow, sunny skies. Chance for scattered rain showers Friday. Chance for scattered storms on Saturday. That's a look at your forecast. I'm meteorologist Paul Trombley. Currently, it's 40 degrees. Broadcasting worldwide from the Ashby Real Estate Broadcast Studio. This is Hip Radio Network, Georgetown, your hometown station. Five, four, three, two, one. The switch is on. Welcome to Good Morning Georgetown with Robin Ken. Waking you up in the mornings and getting your day started with the hottest hits, news, and jokes. Get ready. And now here's your hosts, Rob Hip and Ken Covington. Yeah, yeah, good morning, Georgetown. We'll start with a little song here this morning that I wrote for you. It's called The Stimulus Checks Are Coming. I woke up, man, there wasn't a dime to my name. Checked my bank account, man, there was no shame. $1,200 was ready to go out to debt. Oh, baby, how soon could I forget? Come on, Ken. Ken, I'm just kidding. That's the worst song ever in the history. That's the worst song ever in the history of me singing. The uh, stimulus checks are in. Good morning, Georgetown. 
And thanks for waking up with us here. 7.54 a.m. We are not going to take an 8 a.m. break here on KHGT DB Hip Radio Network. Good morning, Ken. What is going on, my brother? Rob, I need a break. What's going on? I need a break. You need a break. You got a you break. Said we're not, you said we weren't going to take an eight o'clock break. I need a break already. You need. Well, hey, we're going to go ahead. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this morning. Uh, Ken Covington told me <laughs> he could only last on the show for about 30 seconds from now on. And so we're, we just wanted to say good morning to you and goodbye. Have a great day. That, that song wore me right out. That was a worst. That was a horrible, that, horrible song. That was actually pretty good. That was not bad. I was impressed with the words you came up with too. Just trying to make it happen, but you know it didn't work. Ken Covington, our Wednesday co-host here on Good Morning Georgetown. Good morning to everyone, and uh, I hope you're doing well. Ken, what's going on in your world, man? I've got my Alvarez guitars T-shirt on. You know, it's kind of it's a thinner shirt. It's kind of warm in the house because when I take a shower, I keep I turn the heat. Man, it's cold out there this morning. Forty degrees outside. Yeah, it's like I love it. I mean, I like it. You know, like later on, it's going to get up to what sixty six. Sixty six degrees today. Tell tell me about Alvarez guitars, man. They've been around for a while well, since the sixties. They have been. They're they're really good quality guitars for um for the value. You know, you get you get some pretty decent guitars. Um, you get up to about eight hundred dollar range. Some of those sound like a fifteen hundred dollar Martin guitar. Do you sell the Alvarez guitars at Ken's Guitars? I do. Buy them. I love it, man. How are things at Ken's going? By the way, man, I, I always want to ask you every morning. You know, I know that it's you're down there on the square. And that was slow week. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm just seeing people by appointment only, and uh, if they call or text me or whatever, then then I set up a time to meet them. But usually I'm there between one and five. And that way, um, if somebody needs something, I'm there. I, I can get phone calls, and like yesterday, I had people needing strings. I think I'm a I'm a necess- necessary business. Well, you you have the musicians. Yeah, no, and and that's that is that probably your top selling product or guitar strings? Yeah, you know, and all the little accessories. That's kind of like icing on the cake. Yeah. Well, we want to say good morning to everybody joining us on Facebook this morning. We also have several on the HRN app. By the way, if you don't have the app, you can download it. Go to Google Play or your Android iOS app store and just search for HIP Radio Network. That's H-I-P-P Radio Network. And you can download that app and you can listen on the go. And uh, you can also listen when you're driving to work. Did you get that joke, Ken? Did you get that joke just in? You can listen on the go. Oh, that's good. And hey, on your way to work. <laughs> go. We're having fun this morning. So, do you like my dollar? I got these at the Dollar General for a dollar. You like my glasses? Yeah, they're a little bit crooked. The The left Are side they? is a little higher than the right side there. Well, my head's is crooked. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I, how do you know which ones to get? Do you know what your prescription is? 2.0. So if I, <clears throat> yeah, if anybody has some 2.0s I want to give away, I mean, I, I have some other ones around here somewhere. I couldn't find them. So these are my next, you know, I, these are my geek glasses. I like it, man. Well, the top news this morning is stimulus checks are coming in. And Ken, you've got some good news. You got yours this morning. I did. Deposit. I was like, wow, I had, I had 31 cents in my account last night and 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 now i have a lot more 1231 cent well how many cents would that be ken if if it's hold on we're gonna do some math here 1200 <laughs> times point i'm really really bad at math so you're gonna have to bear with me tom uh, so now you be... you should have a hundred and twenty thousand and one cent in your account. or wait how many like cents how many cents did you say you had in the account to be 31 cents so you'll have a hundred and twenty thousand and thirty one cents that's a yeah. lot of pennies man it is i'd like to convert that to pennies you know how cool that would be yeah i'm gonna i think i'm gonna do that you know i don't know if i'm gonna get one kid I, I didn't get a check this morning and I'm worried because I'm on a payment plan with the IRS from last year mm. or from 2018 taxes. And I'm worried that are they just going to – I've tried to research it. I can't find anything. So maybe somebody out there can answer that for me. 
If you're watching this morning on Facebook Live or if you're listening on the app, you can always text us at 512-686-2030. My question is, if you owe the IRS or you're on a payment plan, are they just going to deduct that from what you owe them? Oh, damn. You know, because then it's yeah. like, I haven't received anything yet, and I'm a little bit worried about that. So, uh, <laughs> But I know it's new. They said they, they've rolled it out to 80 million Americans. That process started by direct deposit. I have a direct deposit account on file with them, and uh, so we shall see. You know, my my entire stimulus check, Ken, I'm just going to let folks know. You know where it's going? It's straight up going to the utility department here in Georgetown because that's, oh, that's about what I owe them. So uh, there you go. Happy stimulus check hey. Wednesday to you. That's all that's going to go to the city of Georgetown utilities. So uh, you know what? That's one monkey off my back, though, man. So that's yeah. why I'm looking at it. Here's the thing, though. I wanted to I wanted to let folks know about this this morning. Many of you, if you've gotten your stimulus money, let us know. Comment on the Facebook live stream. Let us know that you got it. Uh, well, you may you want you may want to be private about that. So you know, uh, so it's up to you. But if you did get it and you want to let us know, let us know. Just say, hey, I got mine. Here's the thing, though, Ken. Private debt collectors. If you didn't know this, private debt collectors can access your stimulus money from personal bank accounts. Advocacy groups are warning that this morning. This from WGN in Chicago, Illinois. Illinois Governor J.P. Pritzker said Tuesday. They have access to your account? Yeah, come on. Here we go. You ready for this, Ken? You ready for this? Yeah. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker said Tuesday he is working to protect resident stimulus checks from debt collectors as many people start receiving payments from the $2 trillion federal package. Millions of Americans have started to receive direct deposits, as you can and many others, I've seen it this morning, from the federal government, but advocacy groups are warning that in some cases, oh yes, they always have a way, private debt collectors can still access your stimulus payments. A Chicago mm. man who wished to remain anonymous said he found out the hard way when he saw his stimulus money disappear. Poof! It was a magic show. Ken, it was a magic show right in his bank account. He was so excited, he said, quote, my balance came in on the card at midnight. It said $1,200, and then when I woke up at 4 a.m., poof! Houdini, baby! Houdini has risen and performed a magic trick. And his bank account went to down to six hundred and twenty-five dollars. He said. He said that Pioneer Credit Recovery took five hundred and seventy-five dollars out of his account for payment on his student loan. Well, when he called into Pioneer a week ago, he said the government was freezing all the debt accounts during the pandemic. But that's not always the case. The CARES Act, maybe for some, doesn't really care at all does not prohibit private debt collectors from garnishing stimulus money from a personal bank account. It's difficult, and this is a, another quote here from Woodstock Institute. I wonder if that came from the old Woodstock days back in the day, Ken. The old, Wood, the old Woodstock days. The old yeah. roly-poly days, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about there, Ken? The old, yeah, the I old, do. The old roly-poly days. Yeah. It is difficult to find enough adjectives. Oh, mm. adjectives. <laughs> Adjectives. Come on, man. Wake up. It is difficult to find enough adjectives to describe this type of behavior. Unconscionable. Unconscionable. I can't even say that one this morning. Oh, I hate words like that. Unethical. Deplorable. Well, there's a word we've heard a lot of. Said Brent Adams, the VP of uh, Policy and Communications at the Woodstock Institute. Adams said the Chicago-based institute has been working to prevent debt collectors from siphoning much-needed money from American families. It can mean the difference between getting a prescription or not and feeding your family or not. That's why it's so important, said Adams. But it's not too late wow. to take precautions. Here's how you do it. Look, if you owe creditors, here's what you got to do, and you better get on the phone this morning. Contact your creditors, even if the payment has already been made, and ask them, A, can you reverse the payment if they take it away from you? And B, Ask them, can I revoke my authorization for the next series of payments indefinitely because we don't know when this will stop. Just call the creditors and straight up tell them. <laughs> Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raoul is part of a coalition urging the federal government to take action to ensure that stimulus money goes to American families and not debt collectors. 
So if you owe somebody money, get on the phone, call them, and say, could you please not take my money when it comes in? Please. I don't know. I, I'll... I'm, man, I kind of feel like I'm not going to get a check. You know, I'm really feeling like I'm not going to get one. I don't, I don't know why. I just, I don't want to be negative this morning, but I just have this gut feeling that something's going to happen where I don't get one. You know, I'm going to be positive though. And uh, Uh, I can ask my, you have a CPA, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just call your CPA and find out what the rules are. Talking to him right now. Oh, are you okay? Yeah. He doesn't know what the rules are. Oh, okay. Talking, well. talking to him right now. Hey, Rob, do you know what the no? I don't. There it is. There's my CPU. <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea what <laughs> the rules are. Oh man. Hey, Sharon got hers. There we go. We got the first winner. Winner this morning. She got hers. All right, Sharon. Here we go. A little, a little stimulus music for you this morning. Let's make it uh let's let's put in our good old dipping music here this morning. Everybody join us for the stimulus money if it's came in. Here we go, Ken. All right, here we go. Woke up this morning and I got my check. I'm going to the bar. Wait a minute, it's closed. Never mind. You can't go to the bar because it's closed. Hey, good morning, to, good morning to everybody. I think Ken Covington our Wednesday co- Ken you know, it's amazing how fast Wednesday comes. I feel like I was just talking to you, honestly, like yesterday, man. Yeah. Well, you're exactly 36 years and one week old today. Man, I appreciate that, Ken. That's right. Hey, so we had a This Day in History that you had mentioned last week, but we were saving I've it for got this it right. week. I was going to mention I've got it right here. Let's dig right I, into I, it. I jumped the gun. It was, yeah, it was like uh, the Titanic sank in 1912. That is extremely tragic, you know, and, and I watch 15, 1500 people died, man, 1912. And it's just so crazy to think about that. That was 108 years ago, 108 years ago, 108 years ago, that tragedy happened. And you know what? All the time growing up, I thought that ship must have been really, really huge. And at its time, it was a very oh, yeah, huge yeah. ship. You look at you look at ships nowadays. Oh my gosh, this thing's probably pretty small. Yeah, in fact, I am looking right now at a image that compares uh, the cruise ships. One of them, the Allure of the Seas, that is a I believe Norwegian cruise line, and the Titanic is minuscule compared to that bad boy. But at yeah. the time, it was a big ship. It was a incredibly large ship. Have you ever been to Houston? Well, Astrodome. You're looking at the Astrodome, which was huge back in. I mean, whenever I was a kid, my dad would take me there to see the Astros. Um, and it it was large. You know, it was a first indoor stadium. They call it the eighth wonder of the world. Have you ever gone to see it now? When with Reliant Stadium right next door, it's a mammoth. Yeah, I went to the Houston live. What is it? The Houston Rodeo many years ago, and looked. Or you yeah. look right next to it, and it's just this mammoth of a building. Yeah, I mean, the stadium, the Reliant Stadium is huge compared to the Astrodome. The Astrodome looks like a little pimple, you know? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's Sharon's birthday today. She just messaged us saying yesterday was her, or yesterday was her birthday. So we want to wish you a happy birthday, Sharon. We'll sing a little happy birthday to you real quick here. We won't have the guitar this morning, but happy yeah, birthday to you. Come on, Ken, you got it. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Come on, here we go. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear, dear Sharon. Sharon. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you and many more. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sharon. See, if you tell us it's your birthday or happy belated birthday, Sharon, if you tell us it's your birthday, you may get a Good Morning Georgetown birthday wish. Other That's friends right. this morning wanted to give a shout out to all those joining us. Mr. Leland Hill Jr. joins. Good morning, Leland. I hope you're doing okay, my friend. Les Best and Peggy Smith joining us. Pete Riefel, good morning to you, Pete. Hey, Pete, if you're still on, how are how are things going in your neck of the woods, man? Uh, because I believe you work with the EMS, and just uh, if you're allowed to, and you and you and you're able to, uh, let us know how things are going for you, man. I uh, appreciate all the work that you do, and and just working to keep everybody safe. So thank you for all that you do, Pete. Uh, Crystal Shut joining us. Stephen Giorgio, what's up, Stephen Giorgio? 
And Matthew Tipke joining us. Good morning to you. Mike Mayfield, what is going on, Mike? I hope you're doing okay, my friend. Anne Marie Kennan joining us. Bo McKinney, good morning. Rebecca Morrow, Joshua Harris of the Oak Ridge Disciple House, also our Tuesday co host. Good morning to you, brother. Charles Foreman joining us. Brian Burkhart, Matt Waite, Richard McVeigh, Josh saying good morning. And uh, from good morning from all of us at Oak Ridge Ministries. A few more here. David Gibson, Albert, 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 Albert. What's up, Albert? Albert, Albert. I left out the er. Albert Padilla, Georgetown Beard Club member. What is going on, brother? Hope you're doing okay, man. John Montgomery of Roberts Pretty. John is also our Monday co host. Michael Price of the Georgetown Beard Club. Good morning to you. John saying good morning. Mr. Jim Wilson, Juan Carrillo Sr. Good morning. Callan Rollins. What is going on, Callan? Hope you're doing okay. Mr. Lee Ortiz of Climate Control Pros. Man, it's all of our co-hosts on the show this morning. Lee is our Friday co-host, so good morning to you, Lee. Cool. Michael Price saying good morning, lads, and Jim Wilson saying good morning, Rob and Ken. Coach Munoz joining us, Rusty Justice. Steven, is it really your birthday, man? Come on, brother. Is it? I'm going to have to look this <laughs> up, dude. You, you better not be tricking me. Steven said it's his birthday, too. And, uh, you know, I just I stepped out there, Ken, when Sharon said it was her birthday. Mm -hmm. I I, be, I look I I just went it with my heart and I believed her. Stephen, if it is really your birthday, you send me a picture and you prove that to me, and you're gonna get a you're gonna get a song this morning as well, okay, man? But you got to prove it to me, brother. Rebecca Moro, good morning, Tim Constantia, and then hey, John M Montgomery, we we had a call to action yesterday, and a few folks that went over there, and I'm gonna encourage you again this morning, uh, the. I went over to Rio Bravo, man. I got some breakfast tacos. Oh, my goodness, Ken. They were so good. Oh, they are good. The, That's where I go. I go to Rio Bravo. The Canales family reached out and said, is there anything that, that you guys can do to help us? I said, you better believe there is. I've known Perla a long time. And so I went over there yesterday and got them, and they were unbelievably good. John's already yeah. went over there this morning, and he's got them. And John also said, uh, that the the co-host the reason that all the co-hosts are watching Ken, watching Ken is because uh -huh. they're trying to take lessons on how to do the show from you man because you're the you're the you're one of the you're the founding co-partner daddy of this show you know what you know what this is itsy bitsy spider it's a spider doing push-ups on a mirror there you go oh by the way crystal's <laughs> shut she, she's she's tuned in with us yeah yeah that's your daughter right yeah she she lives up in McKinney so we're we're all the way up to McKinney. <laughs> Sharon, yeah. Sharon, good morning to you there. And Sharon is saying today is her uh, brother Steve's birthday. So, uh, you know, happy birthday to Steve as well, man. Well, hey, today it's National Day of a lot of things. We'll get to some United States news here in a little bit. We'll also talk about a few things going on in Georgetown. Are you a ham eater, Ken? Do you like ham? I like ham. Last night, in fact, I had ham and beans. And how many know that when you cook Beans with the ham bone in the middle. It is unbelievable. <laughs> and Papa Brennan. As long as it's not too salty. Oh, man. Papa Brennan, Bridget's dad, he knows how to cook beans, man. Oh, man, they were so good. And yeah. His beans are the ones that as you leave them in the fridge and reheat them, they just get better and better. Seriously. Mm -hmm. And I had some last night, and it, and a little bit of ham bone was left over in that bad boy. Oh, my goodness. It was so good. In fact, it was so good that I was taking tortilla chips and dipping them in the beans and eating them that way. That's a good, yeah. That's when you know you got good beans. Yeah. But today is, and, and the reason I mentioned that is because I had ham with the beans. I mixed it all together. Today is National Glazed Spiral Ham Day. National Glazed Spiral Ham Day. I wonder how... The, I like reading these, Ken, because I have no clue how these things get started. Yeah. It was in 1952, the Detroit, Michigan entrepreneur, his name is Harry J. Hoinsalar, patented not only his spiral slicer, but the ham glaze as well. This is from nationaldaycalendar.com. His initiative, innovative device made it possible for the entire bone and ham to be sliced into one continuous and even spiral. The result was not only perfect for baking, but serving also. The resulting slices presented a beautiful main course. Then in 1957, Honenslar founded Honey Baked Ham. 
Well, that patent expired in 1981, so many companies started offering glazed spiral hams. That's cool. He, he patented that, Ken. Yeah. How crazy is that? Good idea. So up until 1981, if you had a honey-baked spiral-cut ham, it came from Harry J. Honsalar. How cool is that? And if it didn't You're come... Old. If it didn't come from him, it was illegal because he had the patent on it. You were born in 83, right? 84. Hmm. A traditional glazed ham oh, is right. it's baked with a glaze of consisting sugar, honey, or orange juice. Spices to taste are often added. How do you observe it? Well, of course, how you observe it, you get one and you eat it. Yeah. There you I mean, go. Duh. National Glazed Spiral Ham Day Today. Hey, this is something that doesn't get used often anymore, but it was a staple back in the day when you were in school, and it's not a staple or a stapler. What do you think it is, Ken? It is a school supply, and it's an office supply. Some probably still use it, but back in the day, before computers and people were typing and emails, I bet this was used a lot more. What do you think it is? Mm. What do you think it is? What office supply am I talking about? What office supply item am I talking about? Paper clips. It has something to do with paper, but it's not paper clips. If you're on Facebook, what do you think I'm about to mention? <sighs> what do you think I'm about to mention? What do you think? I'll give you a few seconds there on Facebook. If you're on the app, you can tell. Ann already got it. <laughs> Ann immediately got it. Ann Kaiser got it. It is the eraser. Oh. And I'm talking about the big daddy. Look, this isn't the little pin topper. I'm talking about the, the big <laughs> yeah. daddy. It is National Rubber Eraser Day. I've got one of those around Who here. Who thinks of this kind of stuff, man? Correcting mm. mistakes since seven. That's a good That's a good commercial. Correcting mistakes since 1770. It's National Rubber Eraser Day. Happens every oh. April the 5th. Oh, you know why? Probably because tax season, tax day, tax deadline. Oh, people are using that sheet and they're like, oh, well, if I would have put on there that I drove another 30,000 miles, I would have got a bigger reduction. So they, they erase what they wrote in pencil and rewrite it. That's what it, that's what it is. There you go. Tablets of rubber or wax were used to erase lead back in the day. Of course, those pencils were made with lead. Yeah. Ooh, or charcoal marks from paper before there were rubber erasers. Another option for the eraser was a, was crustless bread. That's pretty cool. I'm going to try that. A Tokyo hmm. student said, bread erasers were used in place of rubber erasers, so they would give them to us with no restriction on our mount. So we thought of nothing of taking these and eating a firm part to at least slightly satisfy our hunger. Hmm. Here's a little bit of timeline here. On April the 15th, 1770, Joseph Priestley founded a vegetable gum to remove pencil marks. He dubbed the substance rubber. A rubber. You have to say it like that, Ken. A rubber little uh at the beginning. Try it. It's fun. Yeah. A uh, rubber. A uh, rubber. It's not really what he said. I just like to add that in. 1770, <laughs> Edward Narney developed the first marketed rubber eraser. A uh, rubber. 1770s when he developed the first marketed one. So that's pretty crazy that in April the 15th, 1770, a person founded the vegetable gum to remove pencil marks. And then all, and then just later that year, Edward Narney developed the first marked rubber eraser. 1839, Charles Goodyear. Oh, man. Goodyear tires, Ken. Oh. You remember their jingle? I'm about to sing it, brother. I remember it. Sing it. It's going to be horrible, as it always is. But, you know, I like to sing these jingles. Here it goes. Serious freedom. Goodyear. Goodyear. You remember that one? <laughs> No. That was it. Who remembers that? Serious really? Freedom. That's, that's Seri short. Serious Freedom. Good year. Back in the day. 1839, Charles Goodyear discovered vulcanization. That sounds like something from Star Trek. A method that would cure rubber and make it a durable material. This method made rubber eraser standard. 1858, Hyman Lipman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, patented the pencil with an eraser at the end. We all make mistakes while holding a pencil in our hand, but thanks to these inventions by these men many years ago, we can erase those mistakes today. Well, how do you observe you ever, it? Go ahead, Ken. 
have you ever used you're using a pencil and then there's these erasers that will not erase the lead or whatever's in that on that pencil i have not just, no there, there, i mean there's a it's a real hard eraser and i hate those pencils it's like you it doesn't erase it doesn't erase with that pencil for that lead that's used in that pencil or whatever whatever the you know, what it was a graphite now or whatever but anyway I don't know what they use Man, it, it's it's very frustrating I was just thinking, Ken, I have not, I can't recall. Well, in sports broadcasting, I always use a mechanical pencil. But outside of that, I cannot recall the last time that I used like a regular old pencil with an eraser on the end of it. Yeah. You know? There are some pencils out there. You can buy them, and the, the, the rubber is really hard, and it will not erase. All it does is just smear. It doesn't erase what you've written. Jim Wilson had a good guess while ago. He said whiteout when we were asking, and I was, you know, if I would have been someone to think, that's what I would have thought. That's what I would have yeah, thunk. Whiteout. If I was one to have think, I would have thunk that it was mm-hmm. whiteout. So that's a good answer, yeah. a good guess. Tom McGay joining us now from Audio Visual Consultations. They're one of our sponsors here on HRN. Appreciate Tom and all the work that they do. Uh, they're heavily heavily involved with the Palace Theater. By the way, the Palace earning over twenty thousand dollars. And their recent auctions, that was pretty incredible for those folks. Um, I just really enjoy – I don't get over there a lot, Ken, and I really want to – once we get back in to the swing of being able to go out, I really want to start going to a lot of those shows at the Palace Theater. Have you been yeah, over there before? Yeah, they have a good show. Oh, yeah. Which, one did, which ones did you go to? Uh, the last one was the Christmas Story. The Christmas Story. Really good um, – I mean, they did great. I went to an Elvis impersonation there once. Yeah. And uh, you know what's crazy is when I was growing up, of course, that was, you know, the Palace Theater. They showed movies there. And I remember yeah. the last movie I saw there was Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. We wow. told, I remember my brother and sister and I called our dad. He was working and we said, hey, my sister, I think it was her idea. She was, if we clean the house, can we go see a movie at the Palace? tonight and my dad said yeah, <laughs> yeah so we cleaned the house and he took us to see ghostbusters i'll never forget that cool. i remember that and that's the only movie that i remember seeing at the palace theater when they still show yeah. movies tracy willis good morning to you sabrina bryant robert's printing company one of our sponsors and sabrina sabrina the smile of georgetown joining <laughs> yeah. us this morning she it really is the smile of georgetown i'm gonna sabrina one of these days if you know of a printing company sabrina where i can get this made let me know Ha ha, it's a joke, Sabrina. Uh, I want to get an award made for Sabrina that says the smile of Georgetown and present that there to you. There you go. You know, now I've given it away. But you deserve that award, Sabrina. Carolyn Martin over Georgetown Antique Mall joining us. Good morning to you, Carolyn. Sam Rossler, my dad, joining us, saying love you. Love you too, Dad. Good morning to you. hope everything is going well. Mr. Gene Edmondson. Gene over at Gene's Auto Repair. And service center. Gene's one of our sponsors here. He's got an awesome commercial, man. We recorded that commercial, Ken. Uh, we didn't have anywhere to go because uh, they were so busy. They had a lot of work going on in their shop. There was customers in the front, and I said, "Well, I said let's just go to my car, man." And so we went to my car and recorded the commercial spot. Gene recorded it right there in the passenger seat, and it turned out really awesome. Yeah, and uh, I really, I really like Gene's commercial spot. You know, I'm going to plug Gene because yeah. he's. He's uh, been helping us, and we appreciate that. And it turned out really cool. And Gene has a Gene just has a knack for doing commercials. I don't know if you knew that, yeah. Gene, but you got a knack no. for it. In fact, you know what? As a bonus here for Gene, I'm going to play that spot right now. Here it is. Stand by. Gene's Auto Repair and Service Center is the best little shop in Georgetown. Our technicians are skilled to handle full-service auto repairs on both foreign and domestic vehicles. Combined, our mechanics have over 70 years of automotive experience. At Gene's Auto Repair, we perform all maintenance service, inspections, check engine light diagnostic, AC repair, alignments, cooling system, and much more. At Gene's Auto Repair, we provide auto repair at prices you can actually afford. So, visit us online at jeansautorepair.net for more information or better yet, come by and see us at 507 West 21st Street here in Georgetown. Wow, 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 wow. I love that, man. And Gene, good. Gene just has a knack for it. So, Gene, I may hire you to do some more of our commercials, man, because it turned out really <laughs> awesome. We literally, Gene gave me a script. Or no, I wrote a script, just something real simple. He modified it in like two minutes. We ran out to the car, recorded it on a little handheld recorder, 
And then, uh, I mean, literally within an hour, we had it up on the station, and it turned out really cool. Wow. So, Gene, thank you, man. We appreciate you, bro. I had to give you a plug this morning. So, thank you for all that you do, man. Um, and it's just some cool stuff. So, hey, also this morning, Lisa Green joining us. Good morning to you, Lisa. I hope you are doing also as well. My dad's saying this is old dad on the on the broadcast, man, this morning. So, appreciate you joining, dad. Love you. I'm here with Ken Covington. It is our Wednesday guest host here on Good Morning Georgetown. Talking a little bit about this day in history as uh, we go oh. from National Rubber Day or Rubber Eraser Day. <laughs> I kind of want to go. <laughs> I want to use a pencil now, dude. Uh, I use a pencil all the time. Yeah. I, you, I mean, I, you know, because I write in pencil and then later to remind me of something. Then like in my planner, for example, I use I still use a planner. I like to write things. I don't like to type in my phone. I hate it because I, I forget my planner. I open it up and there it is. You know, there's something special about physically touching a book or physically touching yeah. documents, you know, but yeah, I try to get more into the digital age, I guess, even though, you know, I'm pretty wrapped up in technology, but for me, that's one area that I don't know, man, I go back and forth. I'll write stuff down on a piece of paper sometimes, and then I'll go back to my task list that Google has. Yeah. You know, I just, but there's something, I don't know. I feel like I'm more motivated if I write it down on paper, which is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Hey, today, yeah. <laughs> Ken, you're never going to guess what today is. What? Take a wild guess. Oh, man. Tax day. No, that <laughs> seriously, take a wild guess what today is the national day of. <coughs> national. Just take a wild guess. Mm. Come on, man! Just national. take a take a take a wild guess of what today is the national day of. A wild guess. Oh man, national! <laughs> Who else out there knows this one? National Hamburger Day. Oh nope! Take another wild guess. What today is? What is today? Yeah, it's yeah. a take a wild guess on what today is, kid. <laughs> oh my People goodness! Like, why do you keep saying that? National. <sighs> I mean, just take a national day, a wild guest day. Na national burn your <laughs> senior picture day. No, man, just one more time. Just take a take a national day, a wild guest day. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'll give you one more opportunity to take a national day, a wild guest day day. <laughs> wild guest. <laughs> yeah. It's National Wild Day. It's National. Oh my goodness! It's National Take a Wild Guess Day. <laughs> I need. I need a cup of coffee. I need another one. Oh man! So today is See, like this, one of my daughters gave me this. By the way, it says, that, "I'm awake. What more do you want?" Is that grumpy? grumpy. Yes, yeah, grumpy. Grumpy. Oh, yeah. We talked about last week. We talked about Hank Aaron. It, he hit. He he broke Babe Ruth's record, right? Home run record. And this day in history, Jackie Robinson Robinson was a first black baseball player. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Man. In 19, that, what year was that? April 15th, 1947. April 15th, 1947. Jack, that yeah. is incredible, man. Well, today, go ahead. Kim. It, was, it was attended by over 50,000 fans in New York City at Shea Stadium. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Because you mentioned this day this day in history, and that's not even listed. That is not even listed on the national day calendar. That today really? No, man, that's kind of that kind of bums me out. Today is National Jackie Rock. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's not national, but it should be. It's Jackie Robinson Day. One of his one of his biggest quotes. A life, yeah. a life is not important except in the impact it has on others' lives. Oh, man, we talk about that so much here on this show, mm -hmm. Ken. Mm -hmm. This from the Major League Baseball, MLB.com. A little bit about Jackie Robinson Day. On April the 15th, 1947, Jackie Robinson broke baseball's color barrier when he made his historic MLB debut. Every year on April the 15th, baseball honors Jackie's legacy by celebrating his life, values, and accomplishments. The extensive and unified league-wide show of support has included retiring Jackie's number throughout the majors in 1997, dedicating April the 15th as Jackie Robinson Day each year since 2004. 
and requesting that every player and all on-field personnel wear number 42 during games scheduled on Jackie Robinson Day since 2009. And that's tough because it's tough because, of course, this year, no baseball going on right now. Yeah. I'm going to let my bobblehead take my place for a minute. Yeah, do that. Uh, here's another one. Uh, let's see. Golly, the the uh, 300 people – no, three people killed in the, the Boston Marathon bombing. That was in 2013 Well, already. that seems like that was just yesterday. I know. That's what I was thinking. And then President Lincoln um, was assassinated in 1865. So this is – and I'm looking here. So today, because there's no baseball, of course, being played right now, this is really cool. The Major League Baseball, they are streaming video on MLB.com all day today honoring Jackie Robinson. And so at 7 a.m., they're re-airing the Padres at Dodgers game. Uh, this was a very big game. Matt Kemp hit a homer. Matt Kemp hit a homer in that game. His fourth and three days, a Dodgers triple play, and D. Gordon walk off hit that led the Dodgers to a five four win over the Padres. That back on April the fifteenth, twenty twelve. At eleven a.m., MLB dot com is going to stream a nineteen fifty five World Series film, and the only World Series the Dodgers would win in Brooklyn before they moved to Los Angeles in nineteen fifty seven. Relive footage of Robinson himself playing in the World Series for the Dodgers, who beat the Yankees in a best-of-seven series. At noon today, they're going to stream a Jackie documentary. That documentary called Letters to Jackie. Then at 1 o'clock, they will have a ceremony. Dodgers at Mets, the ceremony, the Jackie Robinson ceremony. That was the 50th anniversary of his major major league debut. And then at 4 o'clock, they will stream the April 15, 2019 game last year, Mets at Phillies. And then at 7 o'clock, they will air the 1955 World Series film will be unique in that it will be streamed exclusively on uh, Major League Baseball's social channels on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And there's a lot more events that are going on today, but those are just some of the highlights there that they're doing to honor Jackie Robinson today. So I think that that is uh, just in, incredible what Major League Baseball is doing because normally you wear the numbers, and uh, today that is what they are doing. Of course, Jackie born in 1919. He passed away October 24th 1972 so that's just a little bit about what's going on today some other days today i told you earlier it's national take a wild guess day and you again you got to wonder how do they come up with this stuff national take a wild guess day I, i just i have no idea how they even came up with this it was created it was a it was a created by jim barber of the barbershop.com and I guess there's a card game that you can play. It's a calculated risk, of course, to celebrate National Take a Wild Guess Day each year. It might depend on how you observe the day. Will you guess how many jelly beans are in a jar? Will you be estimating your taxes? I think that's a lot wild guess that a lot of us take. The day could be full of hunches and guesses upon how you spend it. We're all contestants in the game of life. Sometimes our only option is to venture a guess at what's around the corner. Our inklings or premonitions may never come to be however if the future keeps you awake at night worrying it's good to bet that worrying never paid a bill another good wager about worrying is that it costs you more time and the space in your head than it will ever give back to you but that's just another estimate so hey observe that today why don't you take a wild guess i wish i had a jar of jelly beans we could have a little contest here this morning of course today normally national tax day that's now been extended And then as Ken talked about earlier in the National Day of History, today is also the National Titanic Remembrance Day. Celebrated each day or each year on April the 15th, National Titanic Remembrance Day is dedicated to the memory of lives lost when the Titanic sank into the icy waters of the North Atlantic Ocean in 1912. This from nationaldaycalendar.com. We remember the more than 1,500 people who lost their lives on that day. That ship, of course, known as the Unsinkable Ship, The Titanic, of course, hit an iceberg at 11.40 p.m. on April the 14th of that same year in 1912 on her maiden voyage from England to New York City. Later, in the icy waters of the Atlantic Ocean on April the 15th, the Titanic sank. Those who perished did so mainly due to an insufficient number of lifeboats aboard the ship. There have been a few movies made about it, of course, and Titanic, the famous one that starred Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, So how do you observe National Titanic Remembrance Day? 
Well, one, you learn more about the history. I love reading the history, Ken, of, of a lot of these ships and just shipwrecks and things like that. Mm-hmm. So today is a day that you can really read about the history and follow its timeline. One thing that you can do today is read about the survivors. Do a Google search. Search for the survivors of the Titanic. Watch a documentary or take a virtual tour of the ship. A couple of those that you can watch, A Night to Remember by Walter Lord. You know, the only Titanic movie that I have seen is the one with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, though. That's the only one. Voyagers of the Titanic, passenger sailors, shipbuilders, aristocrats, and the worlds they came from. There's also another documentary here, Walking the Titanic, Secrets of the Titanic. That one's the National Geographic, you know, when they found it back in the day. Yeah. So pretty cool, man, you know, to, to go back and think of those. How the, that's how that movie started. The Titanic was that that lady. They were interviewing her, and then she started elaborating on what all happened that day she was a survivor and she was um remember that yeah it, and, then, and, then she, and, and then they would go back to her during the movie and then she start com- commenting on, or talking about what all happened and you know it was a cool movie who was that is it leonardo what has what's his name dicaprio yeah see when i think of the titanic i think of him, I, just, I just picture him looking at her with his frozen face <laughs> you know, in the movie. Very good movie, though. Very good. Movie. Well, here's a story, and I'll, I'll read this quickly. One of those Titanic survivors, it's the Nav, uh, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly, Navratil Orphans. The Navratil, Na, Navratil, Navratil Orphans. There were two boys, Michael and Edmund. A dramatic divorce and scandal brought the young Michael and Edmund Navratil to the bow of the Titanic in 1912. This is from allthatisinteresting.com. They were accompanied on the voyage by their father, Michael Navratil Sr., who was still smarting from his recent separation from their mother, Marcel Sareto. Marcel had won custody of the children, but she had allowed them to visit Michael over the Easter holiday. Michael, believing that his wife's infidelity made her an unsuitable guardian decided to use that weekend to relocate with his children to the United States. Wow. So that is a story of not just someone going on vacation here, Ken, but a story of a parent taking the kids to the United States to relocate. Yeah. He bought second class tickets on the Titanic and boarded the doomed ship, introducing himself to fellow passengers as the widower, Lewis M. Hoffman, a man traveling with his son's, Lolo and Momon. On the night the Titanic sank the iceberg, Navratil was able to get the boys aboard a lifeboat, the very last lifeboat to leave the ship. Michael Jr., though, only three at the time, remembered that just before placing him in the boat, his father gave him a final message. Wow, three years old, he supposedly remembered this. My child, when your mother comes for you, as she surely will, Tell her that I loved her dearly and still do. Tell her I expected her to follow us so that we might all live happily together in the peace and freedom of the new world. Those were Michael Navratil's last words. Though he died in the disaster, his son survived. They spoke no English, however. They might have been in serious trouble in New York, but a friendly French-speaking woman who also survived the wreck cared for them. The publicity surrounding the Titanic sinking was what saved them. Their photographs appeared in newspapers around the world. And there's a picture that I am showing uh, here on. Well, I'm not showing it on Facebook, but I'm looking at it. And I'm going to try, if you're on the Facebook live stream, I'm going to try to share this picture with you because this is just amazing this morning, Ken. I'm glad that we dug this up. Yeah. The publicity, uh, I'll go back and read this. The publicity surrounding the Titanic sinking was what saved them. Their photographs appeared in newspapers around the world. Ken, back in the day, I wonder how long it took. And that's something else one of these days we can look up that would be interesting. Is back in the day, how long did it take for information to travel across the globe? Because now it's instantaneous, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back then, how long did it take? You know, for for information to get around. If you're on the Facebook Live, they were, they were using Morse in the movie. They used Morse code, didn't they? I think they were using Morse code in the movie, actual movie. Well, because to of those, let them know that they were in distress. 
Well, because of those photographs that went around the world, their mother home in France with no idea. Oh, my goodness. You think about a mom not. No idea where her sons had disappeared to spotted their <coughs> photo in the morning paper. I'm showing the picture of the two Navratil boys right now that from wikipedia on may the 16th more than a month after the ship shank, ship sank she reunited with her boys in new york and all three returned to france michael michael jr would later recall the splendor of the titanic and the childish sense of adventure he felt while getting into the lifeboat only mm. when he grew older did he realize what had been at stake that night and how many had been left behind wow Jeez. No idea. There's many more stories. If you'd like to read these, it's all that is interesting dot com forward slash Titanic survivors. And uh, I think that you'll really enjoy. I think that you'll really enjoy uh, that story about the Titanic. My dad was in the Navy and spent, yeah. spent his time on the USS Goldsboro. He's commenting here. He spent four years on a ship and three years, eight months, and 24 days. And my dad's got that down. He knows exactly, Ken, how many days. 440,000 nautical miles at sea on five different oceans. My dad's seen a lot, man, being in the Navy. Wow. That's so a, thank yeah. you for sharing that with us, Dad. But just an incredible story there, the, the survivors of the Titanic. Mm -hmm. And I posted a link there. If you want to go read more of those stories, I think that's something really interesting, Ken. The year I was born on April 15th, and I wasn't born yet, in 1959, Fidel Castro from Cuba visited the United States. That's kind of interesting. President Eisenhower, Dwight D. Eisenhower was pres president at the time, and he avoided Castro by going and playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to have anything to do with him. It's kind of interesting. Um, That's funny. Uh, anyway, yeah. So President Castro, or yeah, I guess it's Castro, Fidel Castro, in visited the United States in 1959. He accepted an invitation from the American Society Society of the Newspaper Editors to visit the United States. Huh. So. Oh. Yeah, the Titanic. That's that's. Um, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen that, that where they really go down in the ocean and it's really it's a it's a real highly pressurized cube. They they went down and, and filmed the Titanic. Yeah, and they didn't they didn't find it until the eighties. That's what's fascinating. Yeah. I think it was that yeah. National Geographic documentary. Yeah, they, they went down. It's just a bunch of mold and all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, it's just pretty pretty crazy. We, we lost you there, Ken, for a minute. Uh-oh. Oh, your video went away. Uh-oh. Let me stop your video, and then let me see if I can get you to re ask to start video. There you go. I think your phone's going off there, and it shook you It shook you off of us this morning. Yeah. Are you still there? Ask to start video. There we go. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine, yeah, but you're... Uh, okay, morning you, meeting. You may have to, I wonder if you just may have to disconnect and then reconnect the link that I sent you. Start my video. There you go. There you go. You're back. Am I done? Yeah. Steve, I mean, oh, there. wait, wait, wait a minute. Steve Martin's on the, on the stream now. That's weird. <laughs> oh, wait, that's you. I thought it was Steve Martin, man. I'm sorry. I thought it's Steve Martin. I was like, man, that's pretty cool. Steve Martin just connected to our live stream here on Good Morning Georgetown. <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah, I got you now. I got okay, you. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So a little bit of Georgetown news here. This from the Williamson County Sun. Our friends over there do such a wonderful job. This is the paper that's coming out today. I highly recommend that you subscribe to the Williamson County Sun newspaper. You can keep up to date with a lot of different news that is going on here. On the front cover of the page today, Jesse Maldonado helping to distribute brown bag mills and pantry bags for Helping Hands of Georgetown on April the 8th. And Mickey Ross donating a lot of mash. He's been doing a great job. In fact, I wanted to give Mickey a special shout-out this morning. Uh, Mickey Ross had donated a bunch of material and fabric to me as well as elastic bands, and I really appreciate that, Mickey. I'm working on making some more masks here to, to give away to folks as well, so I appreciate Mickey doing that, and thank you for all that you're doing for Georgetown and, and these wonderful folks and the nonprofits that she is uh, helping out. Uh, but that is really cool to see Jesse on the front cover of the page. He is such a, an amazing man, and I love seeing people from our community right there on the front of that paper, of course, that are doing such great work. Uh, there is news this morning 
And again, you can read the full article from the Williamson County newspaper. Uh, there's a complaint against Judge Bill Gravel alleging that he broke the rules uh, regarding the stay-at-home order. I won't get into that, but I, you know, just for me, I think it's a little bit ridiculous that people are making a big fluff over certain things, but that's the way it is. Williamson County Judge Bill Gravel accused of not staying away from gatherings of family, friends, or non-essential activities despite uh, the order uh, ordering others to do so. Georgetown based attorney Robert McCabe, former prosecutor for the district attorney's office, filed a complaint with the DA's office Monday afternoon. Uh, The complaint alleges that Mr. Gravel violated his own stay home, stay safe order by attending his son's grandson's birthday party last week. And you can read more about that article on the front of the Williamson County Sun newspaper. And uh, that is one of the many articles on the front of the paper. Here's another one here. Can the county anticipating many deaths? And I hate to see that. Now, the Williamson County Commissioner's Court was scheduled Tuesday to approve more than $65,000 in emergency COVID-19 spending, including over 13000 for refrigerated storage trucks, if there comes a point where deaths overwhelm funeral homes. In wow. In emergency management, we are preparing for all eventualities and contingencies, County Spokesperson Connie Odom said. Tuesday's agenda included approval of an agreement between Williamson County and the Thermal Trek Incorporated of Austin, for leasing five refrigerated trailers for one month. And uh, that by well, Brad... Only been, I think there's only been four deaths, I think, Williamson County. Yeah, there's been four deaths. Through Monday, there was 124 county residents had tested positive. 72 of them had recovered. And uh, four deaths there. And so, uh, so man, that is uh, that's pretty crazy, yeah. you know. But anyways, that's what's going on there. Uh, we posted this on our on our website when it came out just a few days ago. Cheryl Snyder, there's some good news this morning. Cheryl Snyder retiring as the animal shelter director. She had been there so long, done such incredible work. 13 years on the job. Uh, Ms. Schneider stepping down as director for the Williamson County Regional Animal Shelter. She helped in a lot of history with the shelter, including the 2007 opening, a no-kill designation that came in 2010, and then that 2018 expansion that more than doubled the facility's footprint. But among these markers, one large, one looking large and one bittersweet will be Director Cheryl Snyder's May 7th retirement. She was quoted as saying, I want to thank everybody who has supported the work of the shelter and those who have supported me. And again, thank you for all of your service with the shelter. You guys have done such incredible work there. And we have had, I believe we've had Georgetown Animal. Who do we have on that one time, Ken? We had the Georgetown Animal Shelter. Remember, we had cats running around. That's right. Yeah. We had cats running around in the studio. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. So maybe once things settle down, I would love to have Cheryl come on the show and just talk about her work and, and, and what she had done there. I think that that would be great. Again, these articles on the front, I don't read them all because I want you to go get the paper. The Williamson County Sun newspaper uh, there. Some cool news out of Georgetown High School. Teacher there, Robert Thomas, this article by Lisa Hellyer, he is printing face shields for frontline workers. Uh, he has made at least 500 of these face shields to protect yeah. frontline health care professionals in area hospitals during this COVID-19 pandemic. Scott Alarcon, the CEO of Georgetown Health Foundation, reached out to the high school with $5,000 in funds and the request to make the protective equipment. Uh, The amount is part of $746,000 worth of emergency grants the foundation is giving uh, to Williamson County nonprofit organizations so they can continue to provide critical services to local residents. That is really incredible there. Again, get the paper so you can read it and see the pictures. Really awesome stuff this morning. Um, there in the Williamson County Sun newspaper about folks are uh, help, helping out and getting things rolling. Ken, oh my goodness, Ken Covington. Did you know this? Ken Covington. Yeah. Did you know? Can I can I give it away? Um, Is it good? Ken, oh yeah, it's good, man. It's from our friends over at KGTN, man. Okay. You're in the paper. I am. Because KGTN, of course, they you know we we don't focus a lot on local music here, and we always I have a lot of folks ask us, and we always tell people, hey, if you're a local musician, talk to Mark over KGTN because KGTN does an absolute stellar job of promoting local music. Here it is, it's Ken Covington singing on a microphone in studio uh, with the Cooped Up Concert Series. <laughs> that is so awesome, oh, man! No. So it's is, in the paper. Yeah, it's in the paper, man. That is awesome, man. 
And so you, that was, it was, it was kind of fun to do that. We, we did keep our distance six feet apart and, uh, it was, it was fun. Yeah. That is cool, um, man. I listened to, I listened to it later, like the next morning. And it's like, uh, you know, I'm kind of like, it's, it's, it's like when I listen to a recording of me talking, it's like, I sound like a hick. No, you sound good, man. And I just, I, like I told Mark, I just take people's word for it that I can sing. Okay. And I just go with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, know? no, I think that's cool that, you know, because I, I know right now, man, music, musician, that's been a tough gig as well because there's, you're not getting the gig. Yeah. You know, you guys normally, yeah, you normally the, play on all gumbos. The, yeah. All the musicians have lost work. I mean, it, it's, it's gone. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's pretty tough. Well, that is incredible, man. I'm and I see Brett McMahon on there as well, and I love seeing yeah, that, man. So, those series, by the way, you can see those on the KGTN Facebook page. I, when do y'all do? I think it's every Friday, if I'm not even every, every Thursday night. Every they Thursday do night, okay, perfect. Yeah, we still, they'll they'll have one. Well, today's Wednesday, but yeah, tomorrow night. Yeah, and Heather Jamison has done an excellent job, you know, doing that and just promoting that, and so I think that is really cool. That's one thing that that KGTN focuses a lot on, of course, is local artists in our community, and I think that is really important. In fact, I had two other musicians reach out, and they said, hey, uh, do you know where we can go to get some exposure? I said, yeah, we're, we're doing a little bit here on, on HRN, but that's not yeah. really our primary focus. You know, we've, we've only got a couple of hours that we can dedicate to certain things, and, and so we do a little bit here now that we're launching, but nothing like the great work that KGTN is doing. So that's really cool, man. I love, I love seeing O'Ken right there in the paper, baby. God, I'll have to get well, I have to get a paper. I did not know. Atmos Energy donating ten thousand dollars to the caring place. Uh, Rita Turner thanking Atmos Energy for supporting the caring place. This also by Kate Thurmond. Early last week, the caring place in Georgetown received a much needed donation of ten thousand dollars from Atmos Energy uh, to <laughs> help bolster its food supply. They needed they need food, man, and and I that's awesome to see corporations like Atmos stepping up as they usually do. Yeah. Here's some other news out of Georgetown in the paper this morning. You better get the paper because I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> I'm not giving it away, Ken. Brad Stutzman, this article. County residents responding to the census. Williamson County residents are responding to the U.S. census at a rate better than the state or national average. There we go. That's the Wilco way, baby. That's the Wilco way, baby. Doing it big time here in Wilco. Doing better than the state and the and the, and the the not just Texas, but the nation. Census Bureau figures state that 50% of Williamson County households had completed their census forms through April the 9th. That compares to response rates of only 46% in Travis County, 42.6% in all of Texas, and 47% throughout the U.S. Specifically, Georgetown at 55.7% of all households have completed the census. That's kind of funny, though, because they, I mean, they're trying to count people. So how do they know that that's like more than half of the people? That kind of contradicts yeah, really. itself, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyways, Williamson County Sheriff's Office announced Friday it's conducting wellness checks during the sheriff's uh, during the coronavirus pandemic. We posted that on hrnGeorgetown.com. Brad Stutzman with the article here. Sheriff's Office spokesperson Patricia Gutierrez said the pilot program is designed specifically for those who are vulnerable to COVID nineteen, either because of age or underlying medical issues. They're saying, look, this is not a replacement for nine one one calls. If it's an emergency, call 911. Now, these services are provided for only those living within the Wilco Sheriff's Office jurisdiction, which are in unincorporated parts of Wilco. It's not for residents who live within the boundaries of incorporated cities. Sheriff's deputies will perform the wellness checks based on their availability between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. People can register for that wellness check for themselves or a loved one by sending an email to elderlyconcern at wilco.org. Again, that is elderlyconcern.wilco.org. Brad Stutzman with that article. For more information, call the sheriff's office at 512-943-1300. That's 512-943-1300. That's pretty cool that the sheriff's office is doing that, man. It is good, yeah. Stay home, stay safe, Ken. Can you see my bobblehead here? I can. Talk more about that. You talked to us. You talked about that last Wednesday. Tell us the backstory of that for those that may have not heard well, it last week. My dad, he took me to Astros games when I was a kid. And I think, I, I mean, when I was in the third grade, the first game we ever went to, and I'm not sure when we bought this, but I think this is Doug Rader because Doug Rader, he was a third baseman for the Astros back then. 
and he had red hair. So maybe maybe this is Doug Raider. It doesn't have a number or anything on it, but yeah. Probably got this when I was in third, fourth, fifth grade, somewhere around there. That's cool, man. So, I've had it every it's 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 I'm surprised it's not broke. You know, a lot of times something that old like me, you know, gets broken, you know. <laughs> well, anyway. speaking of antiques, Ken. Ah, I'm an antique. Carolyn Martin, who owns the Georgetown Antique Mall. There's a picture of Southwestern University that's really prominent here in the Georgetown community from uh, from 1912. That picture that was taken of Southwestern on the corner of Main Street and 8th Street that can be seen at the Williamson Museum, and it's also at Southwestern University, that was taken four days after the Titanic disaster. Wow. So I to share that. That's pretty neat. I, I'll have to see. Yeah, i like to see that. So I appreciate uh, her. Hey, wow. Ann, Ann has a request. And if anybody can help fulfill this request, Ann Kaiser has a request. Uh, her neighbor is a police officer and is in need of a black mask. And so if anybody knows where where she can get a black mask for her neighbor who is a police officer, uh, hmm. please comment on the Facebook live stream. You can text us at 512-686-2030. Again, it's 512-686-2030. And let Ann know uh, where they may be able to get that mask and help out. Time now is 8.55 a.m., here with Ken Covington this morning on Good Morning Georgetown. We've been talking a lot about this day in history, about what's going on in Williamson County. Stock market's opening on a slump again this morning. Looks like they were down about 300 points at the opening bell around 830. That's just the way things are going to continue, Ken. Do you do, you do any of that? Yeah. Do you get into any of that kind of stuff? I don't. I don't have any money to get into it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I dab, um, you know, I've dabbled in the markets with like 50 and 100 bucks. That's about it, you yeah, know. Yeah. The day, so. There's folks across the nation in Michigan that are protesting stay-at-home orders. Thousands are expected to protest that. And uh, I guess they're going to get out and get around people to protest it. Yeah, you know? yeah. So go for it. A lot of, there's several. They were talking about churches this morning on the, on the regular news, how uh, people are going to church. You know, they're, they're, they're not obeying the law. I, but, I wanted yeah. to mention, it's really cool. I've seen a lot of churches doing outdoor church yeah. services in yeah. fact my cousin has a church i call him uncle do you have a do you ever have someone in your family that's really close that you call uh uncle and aunt but they're really a cousin did you ever have that growing up yeah there is i can't remember who but I, yeah i used to call him uncle whatever i can't remember who it is though i had an uh i had a an aunt joyce and an uncle joe that were just my cousins but i always called them aunt joyce and uncle joe and then i have a yeah and then I have an uh, an Aunt Ruth and an Uncle. That's funny. I never thought about that. I have an Aunt Ruth and an Uncle, another Uncle Joe that's not really an uncle. I got two Uncle Joes that aren't really uncles, but I but I think them yeah. of as uncles. And yeah. My Uncle Joe has a church uh, up in Oklahoma, and they and they just built a beautiful new building here recently. But they've been doing their services in a parking lot with a loudspeaker and from the porch of their old church building. And then I there guess people just drive up and enjoy the church service there in the parking lot. That is really cool. Go. And we're seeing reports of that from all over the place, by the way. Yeah. So, you know, that that is really neat to see people getting out there and worshiping in, in that way. But I've, right. I've really taken the stay home, stay safe order pretty seriously, Ken. You know, as much as I can. I've, I did get out a couple of times to take care of a few things. But other than that, man, I've just been staying put. Yeah, I mean, I, I leave the house here. I go to my store, and like I'm doing appointment only, so I'm I'm spending four to five hours there answering phone calls, you know, stuff like that, and then um, then I come back home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's I just um, it's just been you know it's I, I I'm trying to figure out how to say this because. I always, I kept saying, you know, when we get back to normal, when we get back to normal, but I don't want it to get back to normal. I, you know, we need a new normal and we're going to have a yeah. new normal. I think after this, I have a student, her name is Elaine and she came in the store. She popped in. Yeah. She lives pretty close to the square. And she mentioned something a few weeks ago that kind of, she goes, she's in her sixties. She's a retired flight attendant and, um, she's always wanted to play guitar and uh, anyway, we were, she mentioned something about two weeks ago. She popped in and said that, you know, this is kind of just a reset of the whole world. When you think about it, I mean, the whole world's always hustle and bustle, right? We're, we're flying here. We're flying there. We're doing everything online. And, and it's kind of been, uh, you know, a reset 
and it's kind of like a new big. So once all this blows over, we'll have a whole new um, mindset in life, I think, you know, so. Yeah, and I'm hoping, man, because it seems like we only come together when there's a national tragedy. And I, yeah, saw, oh, yeah. I saw it the most, of course, in 9-11, when everybody yeah. put politics aside. Right. And everybody came together. And I, I right. most of us, of course, if we're old enough to, and I was well old enough, I was a senior in high school, I vividly remember almost every detail of that day. Yeah. So, friends, I want to encourage you this morning. We always have encouragement here on this show. And I want to encourage you this morning to put all of that aside, all those differences and anything that you may not get along with. So put all that stuff aside and realize that it doesn't really truly matter. What matters right now is what we are doing for each other. That's right. And I really want you to think about that this morning because I, I talk about it a lot, but do we really actually sit down and think about it? I want you to pause and think about this morning. I want you to think about the person that you think that you would never talk to. And I'm not telling you to go be buddy, buddy with somebody. I'm just saying you may have a neighbor that you've never, that you never really got to know that you never really been able to talk to. Now don't go knock on their door, of course, because we're supposed to stay at home, but yeah, you, know, if you can find their phone <laughs> number, call them and check up on them. Think about those that you haven't contacted in a long time. Get on the phone and call them today. That's going to be my encouragement for you today. And I'm going to try to do the same is I'm going to call someone or maybe a couple of people that I haven't talked to in a while. And I'm just going to check up on them. Yeah, not a bad idea. So do that today. Call somebody and check up on them and let them know that you're thinking of them because that is really what it's all about right now is just being here for each other. And if we can't be there physically, of course, we can at least be there as a vocal support on the phone. Right. It would, it, it would just mean so much. To, and I truly believe that today, Ken, that there's somebody out there that needs to be called mm -hmm. today. And there's somebody that's yeah. hearing this message or watching this show. And they're thinking right now in their mind, I know of the perfect person that I need to call. So do that today. Check up on them. And uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to be okay, Ken. Ken, any final yeah. thoughts, man? It's after 9 o'clock, brother. Um, I guess not. Jeez, we've covered a lot of stuff in an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, it goes um, quick. Gosh, it's just keep on rolling, you know? Well, as Take I ask, it one day at a time. As I ask you every show, Ken, what can we do to support you there at your store, man? Let us know what we can do to help you out, man. Well, I'll tell you what. they uh, There's a guy that works in my store, and he, he uh, ties his name. He, um, he lives out in Sun City. He works for free in the store. He, he just he plays guitar. And also Tom Tomlinson's another guy. He, they both live out in Sun They They started a GoFundMe for me, and I really appreciate that. I mean, it's like, wow. It's like they started it yesterday, and it, it, it's going to help me big time. So This was by um, – hey, hold on. This was by – this is really incredible, Ken. Well, man, I know that you're always extremely humble. And so, you know, I appreciate you sharing that because I think folks need to know about it. And I'm going to post it right here. If you are able to help, check out the go. That is incredible, man. That is good friends <laughs> helping out, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not asking for money or anything. You know, I'm not. But anyway, um, they I mean, I'm just really appreciative of it. Them. They they play in my store. They play in the store. Sun City does a, sh a show in my store every last Friday of the month. And um, whatever money they donate that night goes to help pay my rent. And they, they do that once a month. But, of course, we're not able to do that right now. And um, so Ty, who – Ty choked his name. He started that. Yeah, he started GoFundMe. <laughs> so I really appreciate him for doing that. And – um How cool is that man yeah well, awesome brother well you know what we'll we'll continue to to wish you the best and we're all going to get through this ken and and that's what it's going to take is people getting together and helping each other right right, right. So, well ken appreciate you brother thanks for all that you do thank man you. I thank you rob posted that link there and and we'll do what we can to help you because you've helped so many people you've helped me for three years with this show off and on and it's been it's been a fun run and we're going to keep it going man Yes, sir. It's going to be a fun bun run. We're going to have a fun bun run. We need to tell Michelle over at Sloshkies we need to have one of those bun runs here in Georgetown. <laughs> there you go. You know, they do that in Austin, yeah. right? The bun run. Right. We need to have one here in Georgia. We may have we one. Do. I don't know. We do have yeah, one. No, so we should. Yeah, we need to have one. It's just, yeah. I, I don't know how well I can run, but, you know, old fun bun yeah. run. So, well, friends, <laughs> as always, thanks for joining. Ken, thanks for joining <laughs> us, man. We'll keep you, keep you rocking and rolling. Ken Covington, again, our... Wednesday co-host and also the co-founder of this show. We appreciate you, Ken. Thanks for being here. Thank buddy. you. Thank you. 
Well, friends, as I sign off every broadcast, uh, reminding you today that we're not strong enough alone to make it on our own. We need each other, friends. I encourage you today to provide a word of encouragement. Lend a hand to support. Somebody out there today needs you. And by the way, if you haven't already, I always plug this on every show. If you haven't already and you're a business owner who needs help, we're still working on that auction. We still need a lot of items to make that uh, auction a, a great success for business owners, for businesses just like Ken and many others here in our community. Uh, if you have an item that you can donate, you can do that at hrngeorgetown.com forward slash auction. That is hrngeorgetown.com forward slash auction. Maybe you don't have a physical product that you can donate. You can absolutely donate a gift card. You can donate time and a service. Uh, whatever you're able to do would be tremendous in helping out our fellow citizens and business owners here in our beloved Georgetown community. Friends, I love you. I appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful day. We will be back on the air tomorrow morning. For another edition of Good Morning Georgetown on Thursdays, it is Chris Courtney as our morning co-host of Courtney Home Inspections, and we will also have Richard De La Vega of ASA Imagery talking about some of his stunning photography that he does not only from the air, but also doing virtual tours now. He's also a sponsor here on HRN. Very awesome person to talk to, and his work is simply beautiful, and we're excited to have Richard on tomorrow morning around 8 a.m. Hope you have a great day. If there's anything we can do to help you here at HRN, you can always reach out to us by text message at 512-686-2030. Again, that is 512-686-2030. Or you can also email rob at hrngeorgetown.com. Love you guys. Have a great day. We'll catch up with you tomorrow. This has been another edition of Good Morning Georgetown on HRN Georgetown. It's Georgetown's hometown station. We'll see you tomorrow. 